as well. All right, well, there we go. So this week has been uh, pretty light again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we uh, we don't have a lot of movies coming out. We don't have a lot of. I mean, we have comics coming out, but I feel like we're in between. I mean, I guess DC's got got death metal going on still, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I've been. I read. I picked up the first issue of that, but I didn't really read it yet, and I don't think I will. I just picked it up just to have it. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's eh. fine. I guess I don't know. The death metal stuff is okay. I guess. I feel like they really latched way too hard onto the Batman that laughs. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause it's everything is right now. Like dark Batman, dumb shit It's all Batman that laughs. It's all. And I feel like the build up to it wasn't very coherent. So they did the whole dark Knights metal thing, mm -hmm. which kind of, yes, did lead into the source world oh, stuff. And I was going to say, I think it, may have killed feed because of that video <laughs> of course maybe uh something definitely happened all right let's see yeah, facebook's been acting really weird all right uh let's see what we can do here we'll just go live again i guess right i'm jerks <laughs> it's just like hey Reset all the <laughs> streaming stuff. All right. Super weird. All right, there we go. Going live again. <laughs> well, apparently, a two minute DC ad uh, gets pulled down faster than every other commercial we got. Good job, DC. Good, uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> and then you wonder why all of your videos get less views when you don't let people publicize them. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. See, Cause see if, I can, if I can get back in here. Hopefully it doesn't K again. No, nah, it's just my, my phone's been acting weird, too. I don't know what it's doing, either. Oh, I shared that to the wrong one. Shit. All right. No, it looks like it's up. All right. Um, there we go. All I'm seeing, though, is just the YouTube. Um, yeah. There we go. All Screen. Right. As long as it's okay. up now, I can switch it over. Yeah, so we should be good now. Yeah, it looks like it's up in Renan. All right, good. We need that. Kind of. <laughs> but yeah, the it's been a really light, uh, really light week. I mean, it's just been light since Corona came out, obviously. But it's it's been especially rough the last couple months, I feel like, with releases. Like we've, yes. we've gotten stuff like The Boys and Umbrella Academy, but that's because they were in production before everything went down, I think. Yeah, um, it looks like they said that they're going to do the uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon show. They're starting production on that again. Um, they, who, when will that come out? Who knows? At the earliest next year. It ain't coming out this year. That's No, sure. definitely not this year. But uh, yeah, they said they're starting to... And, uh, start it up again. And I think they pushed Black Widow to next year? Yeah, I think that was on the list of uh, things, yeah, because it was supposed to be November, and then November went to next year. Um, Wonder Woman was also something that was supposed to be in December, and I think that also is maybe getting pushed back to I as thought, well. I don't know if that I thought one got Wonder back Woman yet. is actually still coming out. 19. It may be. It may be December still then, their date. see, because I think it was supposed to be in June was the original release date. And we just got another delay in September. Currently, it was in June, then it got pushed to October. Now it's pushed to December so far. Okay, yeah, so still so December date. It's coming then. out okay. on Christmas. So they're shooting for that holiday vibe, which... Is it's a good idea. That's how Avatar cashed in big was hitting that point between 
Christmas and New Year where stuff doesn't really come out. Mm hmm. But then you have to compete with Christmas movies. But I think they're actually in a good spot because there really aren't going to be that movies to compete with at all. So, no, not really. Yeah. Having uh, said that, yes. I don't know how the numbers will do anyway because people are not going to movie theaters still. And AMC yeah. just shut down. Did they shut down? Because they're saying that it's they're still up. It's temporarily closed. But they're, all, oh, okay. their, all their U.S. theaters closed. are closed, yeah. Okay. I think that was that Regal? Let's see. I mean, I know Regal said that they were going to uh, shut down after they show um, the James Bond movie. Yeah. Which was um, what's supposed to come out when uh, April time, I think now, Easter, they were shooting for. So currently, it says that they haven't shut them down but they're they might be shutting all of their united states theaters down due to continued revenue loss mm -hmm. also uk yeah i heard uk was uh on and that list too that was october 4th so that was today right yeah that was mm -hmm. the day they tweeted out about that and they're like yeah we might be shutting down they, they did it earlier too but they reconfirmed i think which sucks and don't get me wrong but and I hate to say it, but I think movies are very much like a going out of style medium. I think the stream to video stuff really has usurped a lot of it in the modern generation. My thing is, if that happens, that may be also the end of like block blockbuster movies, you know? Well, what I think is going to happen is because of the way coronavirus is pushing things out, the drive through might make a come back and they they've been since this has all oh, been yeah. happening they, so I, I don't think our, movies will go away i think movie theaters might go away that yeah that might be the thing it may be that drive-ins it, it <laughs> might be the, the big life. thing about drive-ins was always their inefficiency and cost and mm -hmm. their uh that was really it it's like expensive to run drive through it's like more expensive than a movie theater having said that i think technology may help with that a little bit Although I don't mm -hmm. know if the problems were necessarily technology versus like upkeep and maintenance on the drive through itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, having said that, I mean they built that new drive through over here. What was the last? I year have, the year I have, I still so haven't gone. Yeah. Been there for like three years already. I think. Yeah, it's been there a minute. Um, uh, but I, I see every day that they post on. The, well, since this has all been happening uh, through the summer, they were posting up literally almost every weekend. They're like, "Hey guys, thank you for the support. We've sold out for today." And it was literally almost every weekend well, for the summer. I mean, I'm sure for coronavirus, yeah, when so, there's no other options, I, we'll we'll have to yeah, see what for people entertainment, do. right? I mean, yeah, and we'll just have to see what people do when they have other options right because um, we're still yeah. not sure um, yeah i you know i love drive-ins are always awesome to me i do remember going as a child and they yeah. were very fondly uh you know fun to go to be like oh you could watch a movie in the car <laughs> i mean there was and, all um, kinds of benefits to it uh there are ton of ton, tons of tons of benefits to the drive through and obviously downsides as well but mm -hmm. uh i mean i love the memories of the drive through i definitely uh was sad when they closed what was it cinderella I think that one's still open. There was I know which what one you're talking about though. Yeah. Yeah, it might be eighty eight. Eighty eight was the one that they closed down. That was the one in Thornton, I think. Yeah. The yeah. one in Commerce City is still open, which is the Cinderella one, I believe. Yeah. And then they added that new one, which I think is Right off the highway on um it's right there by the Denver Mart. Yeah, that's where it is. I d I've still never gone to that one. I've I really wanted to go at some point, but I just never checked out info. I and... did too, but I just feel like the location of it is kind of like a weird spot, you know, because the highway is just right there. And I always thought like, you know, can you hear all the cars and stuff right there? And yeah, all, all that? which is one of those downsides once again to the drive through It has ups and downs for sure, just like everything else. Mm -hmm. But with that, that's why we had the commercial that got us bumped off <laughs> for the first part of this video because – there were no movie commercials really to show, so we decided three Jokers. DC didn't like it. <laughs> DC didn't like it. They don't like things. They're mean. Uh, but that's but, fine. I mean, we're still here to talk about it. Uh, and then I think this one I was focusing mostly on Immortal Hulk and Three Jokers because those are what I feel like are the titles that are actually really good coming out right now that deserve focus, that have like stuff yeah. going on. Not to say that Empire was bad. 
but uh, I, I'm I still not done yet. I have like issue five to finish up still, and then six, and mm-hmm. then like maybe two more tie-ins, and that's about you, it. And you I'm know, really done it's here. it's gonna sound kind of shitty to say it, but I feel like the reason Empire was not that great for me is that it didn't have as big of a universe build and like impact as others even though they had all those crossovers and tie-ins with the other series i feel like the build-up to this event wasn't as big as like other events Mm -hmm. like yeah just for example uh war of the realms you had several years of jason aaron's building that up (laughs) for like 10 years worth of Uh, thor same with uh fuck what was it uh civil war civil war had a ton of build-up Mm-hmm. Se- several oh my, years worth. I think there was like I read almost like seventy tie-in issues for that that storyline. Yeah, it was and ridiculous. that's and that was just the tie-ins. That wasn't even all the stuff leading up into Civil War that would like explain why everything was going down the way it was. Ouch, knee pain. But that being my point is like when you do do a universe crossover, I do want it to be big, right? I want war of the realms i want civil war i want something that's big and involves the whole universe and every character is well thought out and placed what i don't want is three of those every year you know what i mean yeah that's i I think i I think the problem is fatigue a little bit i think once again it's the consistency of it you can't do that three times a year and we're pushing it again this year with Right and now, King King and Black now is King, coming out December, King, yeah. and the X Men stuff happening as well. To be fair, the X Men stuff doesn't involve any other titles though. That's which is much, good. That's good. It's, I will say it's still it it does, however, suffer from the same problems we've had with. Granted, I like this run by Hickman and and the tie ins and stuff, most of them, but that doesn't excuse it from suffering from the same problem we've always had, which is too many X Men books going on at once. Uh huh. And I like the X-Men a lot. I understand they're a big moneymaker for Marvel. But I think Marvel needs to focus on diversifying into its stuff more. You know, when you have two or three Spider-Man books and five or six X-Men books and, you know what I mean, all these people with multiple books, you have characters who are not getting time to shine who may otherwise have made good character stories, even if not for, like, you know, your big moneymaker draws. Uh, what was the one they did? I think they did one with Shatterstar? It was, like, a, a whole little side Yeah, they did a miniseries, yeah. It I was, didn't even pick it up. It wasn't even great, but at least they did a character that was not somebody they've done to death. Uh, there was an- another couple recent runs where they had done similar stuff like that, where it was like small runs for somebody, uh, not even in the similar ones. So like, I'd be okay with some of the X-Men stuff if they did more like they did when they were doing the X-Men black runs. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where it was like, all right, here's a one shot of just Juggernaut and this is his story. And yes, it's X-Men, but it's not just our main X-Men team that we're always, always going, or one of the three X-Men team we're always copying on, Mm -hmm. the the classics, the New Mutants, and now Gen X or whatever. Uh, Mm -hmm. I just feel like they they have these characters who are able to be written. Like, Juggernaut got his own series finally, recently, which... Yeah, I haven't read it yet. I picked it up, but uh, I still haven't got to read it yet. It's all right. First, First one's fine. I feel like the dialogue is pretty good but the story is a little flimsy so far granted it's one issue in so there's nothing yeah. really going on yet but it was good i enjoyed a lot of the stuff they put in there a lot of the different how they're taking him and moving him as a character right and the same mm-hmm. i can say for like dr doom <clears throat> i was afraid that when they pulled doom from immortal iron man that that was going to be it for his character development. Have you been enjoying his uh, his new little his series new they is, cover? It's good. It is. It makes sense. It's it's not just like oh, Doom is just back to being a villain for no reason or something. There's actually mm-hmm. layers to the story of what's going on. There's some stuff going on. There's a there's some really good interactions with Kang. 
I will say. That series has some of my favorite moments right now of Kang and Doom. <laughs> nice. Like, really, really good ones. <laughs> I, I just remember one. This one won't, like, affect the story, but Kang just shows up. He's like, here, I gave this to myself 2,000 years in the future so I could give it to you so you could save the world. Apparently, by <laughs> saving you, you demilitarize it, making it easier for me to conquer. Good luck. And then he's just <laughs> off into time. It's just it's so funny the way they have that one run. Uh, I don't know. I've been I've been looking at those good. I will say, like I said, that my favorite run right now uh, as a whole is probably Immortal Hulk. That one started picking up uh, again. Uh, probably like on issue with issue because I just finished reading which one. The last one with uh, and that one was really good. That was good. Uh, issue. Yeah, number 37. I think it started picking back up again after 30, maybe? I'd say probably like the 34. Whole, the whole arc with the, um, what was what was his name? Um, Shadow Base. The, the, yeah, and then like the CEO of... Um, oh, Roxxon stuff, yeah. I thought the Roxxon, Roxxon stuff. stuff was at least palatable. I actually like the Roxxon stuff more than the Shadow Base stuff. Yeah, the Shadow Base stuff was okay. I didn't really care for it too much. Like, um, I, I understood why they had to do it, because they had already been leading into it from the first part of the book. But mm -hmm. I felt like, and even this stuff, like, I really like it's better for me now than it was for Roxxon and stuff. But it, I feel like it's still not quite to the level where it was at the start of the book. No, definitely not. It's involved into something <laughs> very different now. Um, it is and isn't. I, I mean, it's 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 tying back around. It's actually got that very Hickman that's style. Yeah, yeah, it's got that. It's coming back to the roots again a little bit with this new issue because this, uh, yeah, the the issue with the leader was, yeah, I, I'm loving this arc with the leader. Yeah, um, it's, it's going really pretty good. interesting. I will say something that this series in general has done with all of its art, you know, all the different artists, even on the side tie-ins and stuff. Uh, the art really does hit the horror genre. Oh uh, yes, like they, yeah, there's they some, very there's much some really good it. scenes in there. Oh, Definitely yeah. good scenes. I don't know if you, I think it's in that one you're reading where the leader has his like new form or whatever. Um, are you talking about when he's taking over Rick Jones or mm -hmm. towards the end of that issue? Uh, more. I think it's. Is it in the beginning like or the, the end where it's he's like actually... the last reveal page that they showed what he looked like when he, when you know, Hulk I goes think... down? Yeah, all right, that's the one then, because it's while he's in the uh, place below. Is where he's, he looks he's like going that. into all these, uh, he's going to all the different people that, you know, come back from the green door, but then there was this whole thing about the red door and saying, you know, if I shut down, if it turns to a red door, it's... So I was like, not, I was kind of interested. All I'm not that, gonna so. lie, that was actually what I thought was the stupidest part of it was the red door part. I really liked the green door, and then he's just like, "This is the red door." So you just close red the door. Yeah, just basically, kind of just saying that you know, if I take control, it just kind of make. I guess he's taking control of all these. No, no, and I, I it's and... definitely interesting. I was just like, ah, I mean, should have just stuck with the the. the green door. <laughs> like, hey, you're adding a bunch of doors. What's next? Yellow, purple. Amethyst. I hope they don't add more. I hope it just keeps to the green and red. Uh, if if it's they just, add more, then it gets a little... That, and that's kind of how I felt on red. Is like, I'm all right. All right, red, I'm cool with for now. I think it's a little extra. But I'm cool with the red door for now. But if they start adding more doors, I'm out. And I was like, <laughs> just, I'm taking one of them. No. Uh, I don't know. It was just one of those things where I felt like it was an addition that wasn't necessarily like... Obviously, they're pushing into it more. Yeah, but we'll the see way what's they, gonna happen more with it. Yeah, yeah, the way they explained it and like described it, I was like, this seems unnecessary. I feel like he could have just closed the green door or gone back through it himself. I yeah, would. that could have made more sense of just him club. But I mean, who? Knows? I I don't know. We'll Once see again, maybe he has something. Yeah, that, and that's what I'm hoping is there's more to it than just what we've been given so far mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that I would be so. <laughs> and and to be fair we a lot of this stuff like i'll say it's hickman ish but it's not quite to the level for me just because the a lot of it was prefaced so like the one below all being inside or whatever uh or at least what we thought at the time was the one below all being inside mm -hmm. uh brian banner at, and who we now actually know is uh I think that was in the last chapter. Oh no, you might not have read that chapter yet. 
Are you talking about this the threshing great... hold? No. Or this have you one read the? Picked... It's the. This one. It's the graveyard. Number chapter. zero. No, that one's another one. That one's actually not connected. The threshing well, place is good, but it's not. That connected. one's good, but this one actually has some little connection. This Immortal Hulk issue zero. Um, there's it's a oh, reprint. The, the issue, the issue zero or the threshing issue place. Zero. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. It, right? Issue zero with the graveyard. You're saying, right? Yeah, that's Scene. the one I was talking about. You said the threshing place, which is another one. Yeah, that's another one that uh, Jeff Lemire actually it did. It's it's pretty good, but it's totally not related, really. I mean, oh, it, it is and okay. isn't okay. like it. It's to it is in the continuity and it is in the story, but it's like it's like a it's, it's like filler. It, it doesn't really affect the story. Okay, it's more of like it filling. It. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, I was talking about Zero, where it's okay, uh, Zero, Brian, okay. yeah, which is once yeah. again while how they're wrapping back around. Yeah, it's cool. Story. I like that they did this. Um, because usually I don't pick up these. Uh, this because it kind of reminded. I thought it was gonna be like one of those Marvel tells. Yeah, that they've been doing I, I was afraid of that as well, but then I saw it was Immortal Hulk, so I was pretty sure it wasn't gonna be. Yeah, right. And yeah, somebody told me too. Yeah, that they were like, oh yeah, there's actually a couple, you know, more scenes that they they you know they did that aren't reprints in here. I was like, okay, cool. I have to pick this up then. And they yeah, were also saying. It kind of plays a little bit to the story as I, well. I will actually say it. Some of that might have been pulled from really old comics, but I don't think we saw any of that in Immortal Hulk. Like most of it, we at least the graveyard stuff with his dad. Oh, that no, that all that stuff. Yeah, the the one where it changes into completely different art. Yeah, those are all um, added in scenes. Um, but I, I like that, like you said, yeah, that they're pulling from old stuff and kind right, of bringing yeah. it back into this and which then they're is, adding on top of it. Yeah, which is something that I feel like certain writers are really good at. I feel like uh, <laughs> Lemire, Cates, not Lemire, uh, sorry, uh, Hickman and Cates are really good at pulling from Marvel history to their new stories. Mm -hmm. Just grabbing something nobody has like. Well, did you hear what he tweeted, uh, Cates, on, uh, on Twitter? And everyone uh, went a little went a little spec crazy. Was it the one where uh, he was like, "If you think you've seen something, you ain't seen nothing yet," or something? He mentioned something about Throg. Oh yeah, I, I saw that one already. So yeah, some some people are already yeah getting a little hyped up for it, but uh, I, who knows what he'll do with him? I I guess I, my thing is I don't think he can get me any more hyped for Throg than I already am. <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm number one Throg fanboy. Throg wrecks. <laughs> I don't give a shit well, what anyone says. Throg wrecks Thor. Well, well, you should. Um, if you've been reading Immortal Hulk, then you, I think you might like this book. This is Al Ewing's uh self-published book that he's doing for Image, and it's called um, "We Only Find Them When They Are Dead." Hmm. And um, it's a really. I haven't read it yet, but the the um the concept of it sounds really interesting to me. Let me kind of find a um. All right, let's see if we can. Meanwhile, I have to little... wait for all of these other sides. <clears throat> it's my only problem with reading from third parties is because they don't have a plethora of stuff for me to grab onto. The I'm I it's like manga. I'm I'm left waiting for the next chapter, but it's not enough. So I'm just like, all right, well, I need to wait for like six chapters to build up so that I can actually read a good amount of story. <laughs> And then I forget that I'm reading it for like three weeks and then I come back and there's like 10 chapters and it's great. But th that's my only real problem with some of the side ones. At least with Marvel, I can like hop onto another part of those bigger stories where it's like, all right, I read Empire this. Now I can read Empire this, even though I have to wait a week for the next book for both of them or two of them. Right. I also need to recheck out all the new Vertigo stuff from DC Comics as well as some of the Endless endless stuff that they did that tied in with dark knights because okay. they, they screwed their cosmology up bad they were okay. they so would have been totally fine yeah go ahead <laughs> no sorry i was gonna go ahead and read this off so yeah for fans of decorum which is the one that jonathan hickman's doing um and something is killing the children which i love is another one i think you still need to check out uh comes a new sci-fi I... epic from maui ring uh, Mortal Hulk guy, of course, and then uh, looks like Simone DeMio, who's doing more Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, um, on the edge of space where humanity is harvesting the corpse of giant alien gods to survive. Uh, no one has ever, uh, sorry, 
No one has ever seen a living god, but Captain Malik is obsessed with being the first. Uh, Captain Malik is a crew of Vihan to harvest the only resource the matter sorry the only resources that matter from the giant corpses of alien gods found on the edge of human space while other uh, other autopsy ships race to salvage the meat minerals and meats metals that sustain the human race malik sees an opportunity to finally break free from this system uh, but malik's obsession with the gods will push his cr uh, crew into the darkest reaches of space bringing them to face to face with their threat unlike anything they've ever imagined unless the rogue agent on their trail can stop them first sounds interesting right <laughs> it's definitely got an interesting concept so i mean alex at al e wings writing it i'm gonna check it out um he's he's done some pretty cool things i've liked so far with um you remember the ultimates right when uh that one came yeah, out yeah yeah that, that really was also him job. too so I, I love the ultimate stuff that's cool I love his Immortal Hulk stuff, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that he's not gonna do too uh, too bad on his first. And I don't think this is his first, but like on his, you know, um, own uh, creator owned book yeah, right here. Yeah. It's out for him only so far. I, this is the only one I know of that I'll he's got. I'll have to see. From what I remember of the different writings in the Ultimates and other stuff, uh, Al Ewing has really good concepts. Like he's really good at building a concept, and then. I think he's pretty much moderate in all the other areas so he's really good at like coming up with good ideas life bringer galactus mm -hmm. this thing that was good i like that once again <laughs> he's got nice unique ideas right like something that's interesting and is a good like jump off point mm -hmm. having said that i and i did enjoy ultimates a lot but i don't think there's anything else of his writing that i can think of not like what he's written but his writing style that stands out to me specifically i think he hits all the other bases like very solidly whereas i've talked about it before how i think uh jeff lemire is really good at writing dialogue mm -hmm. but i'm not necessarily always very impressed with his stories <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly um yeah i mean check it out you may like it um i haven't checked it out just yet i i kind of just flipped through it just to look at the art and the yeah art looks pretty awesome. it was cool it's got a nice like flat color tone which i think is interesting he he, he looks like he's enjoying playing with the light coloring because they're mm -hmm. in space so that's cool right <laughs> and then there's a scene yeah where i just see them cutting up big giant pieces of meat <laughs> yeah which you know i mean there's definitely gonna be one thing once again i like about those is they're uh they're really nice Damn, I gotta watch that. Read that too. They just brought back Marvel Zombies, the second part, like six months yeah, later. I, yeah, I was wondering when that was gonna come out, so I, I didn't even read the first one yet. So I'm glad that I uh, didn't yet. Now I can finally catch up with that one. I guess the first one wasn't that impressive. Um, so was this other one I've been reading too that I've been liking is um, it just came out too. First issue for them, uh, Unkindness of Ravens. Um, pretty good so far too. This is another one I'm enjoying. Um, you may like it. I I've been loving everything that Boom Studios has been pushing out, and like, uh, they've been getting really high numbers in all their uh, first issue for a lot of books. So like, um, I know Unkindness of Ravens did good. Um, the Seven, um, we only find them when they're dead. Also did really good for a first issue that came out. Um, James Tinian's Wind that came out also did pretty good from Boom Studios. Uh, Something Killing the Children is like hot, 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 hot fire right now. Like people are now finding finding out about this book because the trade uh, paperback just came out, and yeah, people are loving that book, and I'm glad they are because it is very good. <laughs> so that's one I've been enjoying from Boom Studios as well. That yeah, they've been doing some good stuff. I, I think they're I also uh, rebooting the uh, not rebooting them, but they're re uh, starting again with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for uh, number one issue. Um, but they're they again they 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 took that Power Rangers and they uh, they they did so good with it i thought you know they they introduced new characters really awesome care they even took the characters and they were so like um hyped up that like now there's action figures of these guys like they have uh dracon uh the jason from another or uh, not jason um yeah jason from uh Green Ranger, he's from another, or Frank, I, don't, I can't remember. Frank, Jason, whatever, because <laughs> he always plays both. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, um, they made his action figure, and it's uh, like the Green Ranger mixed with the uh, White Ranger, and then they also came out with the uh, Ranger Slayer 
um which is like the the pink ranger but she has like uh she looks you know with black a little bit on her outfit got a cape even on and she's hunting rangers instead i love everyone <laughs> um, with the cape but yes everyone keeps, cape, cape, cape everything cape, makes gotta, it better gotta, gotta have capes god capes forbid make it they're better. terrible wardrobe choices so yeah it's been good i i've been really enjoying everything boom studios does and uh yeah they have these really crazy uh books and uh yeah been really enjoying them um other than that i kind of read some other stuff like venom that that venom issue is pretty good i don't that think i little, checked uh, out the most recent one okay yeah yo it, it was kind of like a big like whoa at the end but i was like it, it was good i enjoyed it so um the ones i've been checking out are uh strange academy the mortal hulk that one i've been liking too i like strange academy it's good. i, it's I just good. like it because it's scotty young i like scotty yeah young. scotty young does good stuff uh marvel always loved marvel's oh, x came out which i think is interesting they will not let that universe die you know i read it and i actually enjoyed no, uh because it yeah, first it's couple issues of it yeah it's good it's fine i'm enjoying reading it i like, I like I the just concept can't believe... of it oh yeah it's a really it did well because it was a good concept you yeah know what i mean the, I, just, the... I didn't know about it either until i kind of read it and then it's, i started reading it's... a little bit more and i understood a little bit more of the universe right and... it's funny because i literally i think that was the first trade i'd ever picked up oh okay so I picked it up and I had no idea what it was. And I opened it and it's just like, what the fuck is this? Like I had no context. I don't know if I started on the first one or the second one. So I might've like been super screwed, but like, it, I just remember looking at him like, wow, this is like one. It was kind of dark, obviously for Marvel at that yes. time. Uh, but two, it was just like a whole, it was really also my introduction to like bigger. What if stories? Okay. So it was just like, holy shit, I never considered that you could just, like, do something totally crazy or different and screw the whole world up for Marvel, basically, and get away with it, which <laughs> which is cool. And once again, I really enjoy the whole concept of the universe. You know what I mean? It's just, mm-hmm. once again, I don't even remember. That had to be 10 years ago that I picked up that book. Yeah, yeah. Have you read the the new one that they just pushed push out? Uh, which one? The the new Marvel X one they just pushed out for. Yeah, the one they're so releasing I think they're like now. On issue four. Yeah, they're like on yeah, issue yeah. four right now. Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, but no, I just say, have you read it though yet? Yeah, I've, I'm caught okay. up right now. I just finished nice. five, which I think I still need the yeah, I read four and five still. So it's on... cool. I like, I like the the take on it, which is like, all right, the last human on Earth kind of thing. Which is cool, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's unique for that. You know what I mean? It's really it's even in that universe it was kind of something that was like a little unique. Obviously you had Stark or whatever being one of the unmutated oh. or whatever, but uh, this yo, I forgot. This is a book you need to read. Definitely read this. The Department of Truth. Oh, you need to read this. Who pushes you need to it read out? This. Image Comics, and this is another book by James Tinian. James Tinian is on fire right now with pushing out content. Really good content, too, really. He's the one that does Batman. He did that win book. He's doing now this Department of Truth book. He He's doing the Something Killing the Children book. Um, and all his lie, books have been really good. Been rough. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been read like most it. of the Batman stuff. I picked it up, but I haven't really read it. It's, I've just been reading more of his, uh, his indie stuff kind of right now, which has been really good. It's a bit rough. The, the Batman stuff, at least. Uh, I still oh. gotta get... I think I'm only a couple chapters into Killing the Children, so maybe I just need to get farther. Oh, nice. So you've been reading that one too now? Yeah. I I didn't get very far. I wasn't very interested at the start, so maybe it picks up and catches my interest. But so far, it's it's not on my list of high reads. It's, okay. It, I'll okay. read it when I catch up on other stuff, basically. Uh, it just didn't have a very quick start to me. I didn't, it didn't catch my attention, so I gotta hopefully, hopefully in the next couple chapters it does something to do that. Okay, okay. Having yeah. having said that, I do know his, the other couple titles he's worked on, he does really good work, so I'm hoping that it's just taking a second to get going. Uh, yeah. Batman yeah. stuff, I don't, is he writing the three Joker stuff too, or just the main mm. Batman run? He's probably doing that one too. No, oh, no, he's not doing the three no, Jokers. Yeah, he's doing yeah. the. Uh, I was talking about the Joker War Zone. I think is he's doing that one. Okay, I haven't actually read that one, so it might still be <clears> that one. Just for that one. came out too this week. Yeah, that that's why I haven't read it because Batman Three Jokers is all right, but regular Batman right now, just like whoever's writing Batman, Batman. 
just I don't know who's writing it, but it's not very good. That's right now. him. Yeah, that's James Tinney. He's, he's doing it too. He's doing the regular Batman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's doing. Yeah, he's been doing Batman. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So, like I said, some of the Batman fans I go to the comic shop have been liking it. Um, but, I, uh, yeah, I they, honestly, I haven't been reading been, it though, so I don't know. I I just go off of what I, they say. I've been reading it, but I've been. I've been doing what I basically do with Wonder Woman and the Flash, which is I just like force myself to read them because they're the main runs. Yeah, the, yeah, pretty main characters for to pretty be, much. To anything. be fair, I feel like every single DC line right now is not very good. Uh, the singular ones: Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Flash. Mm-hmm. The, the individual stories right now are not hitting. I feel like they're putting a lot of more emphasis into the crossovers and stuff. I feel like they're putting too much time into that. Because, like, the crossovers I, are hitting okay. Like, Death Metal okay. and Speed Metal, they're decently written Those books. have been pretty good. Yeah, hey! I heard some people like the Robin King stuff and, and all it's, that. It's it's just too much. It's it's the, the fact that it's a combo of too much and too little, right? So if I go into Wonder Woman right now, right? I haven't read for a couple weeks. But, yeah not at all involved with the world universe shattering consequences that are currently taking place everywhere in the universe bad this is not good you you can't have a like they're literally in speed metal they've like destroyed like 90 percent of the multiverse okay so some of these stories shouldn't even be fucking happening because their their multiverse was or their universe Mm -hmm. was destroyed uh other than that, then once again, so you have that disconnect, right? But then the the tie-ins themselves, or not the tie-ins, but the the group ones on DC themselves, are so encompassing. Like everybody shows up. It's Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman and fucking Man Thing or whatever. You, you know what I mean? Constantine. Mm-hmm. Everybody shows up, and they're in two books at once. The connections are there, but they're not there. It's is hmm. really a little rough. I feel like they're the I feel like the structure they had when Rebirth came out where they were really good on continuity has basically just been flushed down the drain. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I don't read too much of the DC. I mean, if I do, it's mostly just the side side uh that's not even really a part of the main Yeah, universe, well, like uh, you, you told like me black you, label stuff. I was going to say you usually read black label, which to be that's fair, black label idea, is yeah. black label is fire. Like there's there's I, like maybe two black label titles I don't read. Yeah, there's um uh, the one I've been liking. I like the Constantine one they just came out with. Um let's see. I think that was pretty much it. They they haven't really been pushing anything out more that's coming out on the black label line that I've seen. Um, but actually, no. That I guess the three jokers would be another one that's on their black label too. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then, uh, the other one I like to read is the um, the white the white knight stuff. That's been really good too. I read yep. the last one they came out, and then they're coming out with the new one that I'll re- be reading, the Harley Quinn one. So I'll check those ones out. Those, yeah, that's pretty much all I read though from the DC universe though. Uh, and then, like I said, I pick up the the Batman books, but I have yet to read them though yet. Um, I mean, so we'll, they're, we'll see. they're not, they're not bad, I guess. I feel like once again, they're, they suffer from the DC structure more than the writing of the story. The stories uh-huh. are fine, but when they're trying to juggle Batman with the dark, the dark multiverse stuff and Batman with, uh, the Joker War stuff and Batman with the four other Batman titles that are currently going on gets a little <laughs> bit rough. Okay, okay. A little bit. All right. Having said All right. that, I mean, it's still not the, the the it's not bad. I'm just used mm-hmm. I just am used to having like good Batman and good Superman written cuz they're supposed to be the main titles and they're supposed to be the ones I want to read. To be fair, mm-hmm. that's like a 50/50. It's like it's never that fucking way. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and like I said, uh, Boom Again, man. I forgot about this book, too. You need to check this one out, no, too. You Maybe said, you might you, like it. You mentioned the Did Seven Secrets. Did I talk about Seven Secrets? Yeah. Okay. This, this is another Boom Studios book. Uh, and another art uh, writer that I liked, uh, Tom uh, Tom Taylor. Nice. He's the one that's doing all the um, – he did, he did the first run of um, X-23 uh, when all that came out with uh, Gabby and all that. So he did all that. 
Um, he also did. He's doing the deceased stuff. Which is um, good stuff. The deceased yeah, stuff has all been hitting really hard. I've been, been really liking the deceased stuff. It's really been pretty good. Um, let's see. And then, yeah, this new uh, book that he came out with called Seven Secrets has been pretty good, too. It's uh, enjoyable. I like it. I'll see where it's going to go. Um, I think that was it from there, though. I couldn't remember if there was anything else. So that, oh, <laughs> I picked this up, too, but I'm probably going to not read the whole story. <laughs> Ultraman, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I was like, ah, and then I, you know what? I thought about. It, I was like, I don't really care for Ultraman. Like, I didn't grow up with Ultraman, so I don't really care for the story too much. So I think I'm gonna drop it off. I just wanted to see what it looked like, so I just picked up the first one. So there's that one. Um, yeah, there was quite a few things that I wanted to check out still. I know that this Birds of Prey came out. I think this is the last uh, book for for the Black Label stuff from them. That'll be interesting. I didn't really keep up with Birds of Prey, but I just had a bunch of other stuff on my thing. There was no reason for it. No, I just have it. And uh, it's one of the smaller, uh, thinner uh, Black Label books, that's for sure. It's not one of the little thicker guys that you usually get. That's why I kind of, uh, you know, I slack on reading those ones because they're like, okay, if I read this, I'm going to be here not for like, Tw- uh, 15 minutes reading this. We'll be here for at least a good 30, 40 minutes reading this guy. Yeah, the thicker um, ones definitely get... Okay, I did notice that. Yeah. See, that's one... I knew there were some of the ones that he's been writing recently with Tinian that were fire. He did a lot of the Red Hood and the Outlaw stuff. Oh, okay. See, and, I didn't know he did any of that stuff. Yeah, and, and pretty much most of Red Hood and the Outlaws is fire. Okay, nice. I'd say nice. a good 80%. There's a couple okay. couple little in between arcs, but he gave us the Dark Trinity, which is a real big thing, right now. I don't know if you've heard of the Dark Trinity yet. Ah, uh, no, I'm not bringing any bells on that one. So, I don't think. So the Dark Trinity just got introduced in Outlaws, and it's uh, Artemis, Bizarro, and Red Hood. Okay. And they're supposed to just represent the criminal dark half of the Trinity or whatever. It was really good though. It was really interesting. Okay. Uh, well, this is something else he's doing too. Um, and apparently, called... he is the original one to do the Batman Who Laughs. So, which I Ooh, did, okay, which I did not know. Huh. Okay. Okay. At least according to this. Yeah. Well, this is something else he's doing too. Well, this isn't all of him. This is a couple other. Well, I, I mean, think, most. Right? I feel like right, a lot of writers. Yeah. This. There's usually but, a couple uh, writers on they, books. Yeah. This is something that you couldn't even get in the comic book store. Actually, this is. Uh, something i picked up off of their his online store called um tinny and onion studios onion. <laughs> this onion. thing sold out quick though like it was as soon as they announced it and it got leaked up on uh like bleeding cool it, it sold out probably like within i don't know 20 30 minutes of it being online so um people are going james tinny and crazy right now <laughs> uh, but it's a it's a horror anthology book so there's some pretty cool little scenes in I there. Was, it looks like most of what he writes is horror anthology from what I'm seeing. Which I yeah, I kinda enjoy. So oh, yeah, I, I, I like I, it. Really, I, just really, I think noticed. you should keep reading uh, yeah, his something killing the children. I think you're gonna get more into it because it gets a little bit more interesting about this Erica Slaughter girl that you're I, gonna be and seeing. And I think more that's a hundred percent of what I'm waiting for is I know that she's the hook for the story. She's the quirky, mysterious uh protagonist. That you know really nothing about still. Yes, and, and I uh, think the problem, my problem was that within, I think I read chapters one, t- either one and two or one, two and three, and that within the first three chapters, I hadn't gotten anything that... From it, yeah. Okay. That, not from it, but just that made me, like, jump onto the character. Okay. It, it reminds me of Captain Marvel, where everything is good, but I'm not, like invested in the characters yet because okay, i don't know I anything see. about them i yet. see and you know and i'm kind of was a little bit of the opposite i i attached i gravitated there a little bit closer to her because i just like those like weird kind of quirky and weird i, I like and... weird characters i'm i was just waiting for another shoe to drop something basically. more interesting for her to bring her more a l- little bit that a little more interesting and once again i think the information like the quirky wild stuff but without like a clear uh all right so another example of this one you might not have seen but in red versus blue they have uh the freelancers and whatever and the freelancers are actually the villains technically Mm, they're like the bad guys 
but it's really hard for you to get on the other people's side because you know nothing <laughs> about them. You do literally like, you know, their name and that they're supposed to be like part of the military and uh, they're not bad guys. That's it. That's all you know is that they're not bad guys and they're not part of the or and they're part of the military and maybe like two people's names. And so it's okay. really hard to like get to a point or another character where it was a character who was on that team and who is trying to do the right thing, but they're a total bitch. It's like a huge <laughs> bitch. Like no, no other way to explain it, but just like this huge bitch. And so it's like, I really, it's tough for me to care about them without any endearing qualities whatsoever. <laughs> okay. I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. Read, read a couple more issues. You may, you may or may not, uh, you know, cop onto it tomorrow. Um, well, I, I will it. say, it's... I will say, most of the recommendations you give me are good. So I usually try to get through them. <laughs> just gotta, yeah. Keep it's reading just some, it. sometimes they just take a little longer. Cause yeah, like, there's uh... there's some of those. Yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a couple issues where like I'll read and like, why did I read that? And then like after maybe the fourth or fifth issue, I'm like, okay, this is this is much better. Oh, yeah. I'm kind of glad the... I didn't take this off. And there's definitely series I've read like that before, even. Uh that where i was just like why did i read this and then i read a couple more i'm like i'm glad i ke i kept reading this because it would i would have missed on this uh <laughs> and so i usually like try to give comic books at least four or five chapters to okay. get into them that's a good that's a good yeah because if, if you haven't done it in four or five chapters you basically got a whole arc I mean, even in the first chapter, too, honestly, like I've heard from like the guy I buy from Comic Stars, he's like, too, he's like, really, you have to like really do a good job of grabbing the person's attention in the first issue. Cause you like, you know, after that first issue, if they don't like it, some of them, a lot of people are like, you just, you know, like, I'm not going to read it. That's it. I didn't like the first one, not, not picking up the second one. Oh, yeah. One. And I mean, even beyond that, that's why certain things, I mean, are titled the way they are, are presented the way they are with art and stuff. Like, for example, even going by the titles like Basketful of Heads and Something's Killing the Children, those are catch me titles. Oh you know yeah, I mean? definitely, those, definitely. Those yeah, are not especially yeah. When I read that title in the previews, I was like, Oh, okay, this sounds a little interesting. I'll, I'll go ahead and check this out. <laughs> exactly. And even the previews we talked about how like their little descriptions themselves are really important in getting across yes, the very, message. Yes. Cause I know that there are some that I've read and not read based on just the description where I was like, eh, this doesn't seem like yeah. it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, Cause I'll look at the cover and the, the name of the title and that, like you said, that draws my attention to it. But then once I get to the description then I'm like, okay, I like the, it looked good at first, but now that I read what it's going to be kind of about, I'm not on board. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, having said that, I think we're coming towards the end of our stream session here. All right. Is there bit. was there any last minute things that you had on your list here? Uh, um, I mean nothing really. We covered most of it. We covered the three Joker stuff, the Immortal Hulk. I'm honestly a little disappointed in the states of both of the comic companies, the big two right now. It's just not okay. Just not like they're just not hitting as hard as they. I feel like they usually do for me. Like yeah, like, no, like when, the only ones I'm reading more is just Venom and. Um... Just, Venom's just in my 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 really my bread and butter <laughs> for, <laughs> for Marvel yeah, and Marvel Hulk. Yeah, and that's what I was gonna say is right now. Whereas whereas during some times, right there's like many books on my list where I'm like, oh, I gotta read this and I gotta read this, or even like at the beginning of uh, Dawn of X and stuff, where it was just like, dude, I, I can't wait for this next fucking book to come out. Like, where the, is the book mm -hmm. at? I'm just not feeling that for most of these series. Okay, like. And, and once again, that's both sides, like Marvel and DC. I'm just not feeling the hit of, like, I need to read this book this week. Like, I am dying mm -hmm. to read this next chapter as compared to something like, uh, fuck, what else, what else was I reading that I was really excited for to come out? Uh... I know it's in here somewhere. Shang Chi came out. I picked that up. I haven't checked oh. it out, but I'm I want to. I know nothing about him, so I'm gonna check it out and see what what, what uh what it's gonna be. <laughs> I'm interested. I feel like there isn't all that much about him, so like this is yeah, a chance to really not. push his character. Yeah, kind of. And I'm hoping exactly. that if it's uh if it is doing well, that it'll push forward with his movie idea. I really, really yeah, exactly. Like to see. Mm -hmm. 
I just like I, to well, see something different from well, Marvel. Before we go too, I wanted to go that I did love that Marvel did this to a lot of their upcoming books that they did. Yes, for Chadwick Boseman, they the, Marvel's actually extremely good about shouting out anybody related to them when they pass. They've been yeah, they've so had was... George uh, Sinnott. I think if you open the cover, he's still in the front page. Oh yeah, he's actually in the middle. They have like a big old uh, yeah. tribute uh, yeah. for him. And so yeah, and there's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, there's that, that one, but I, what and I then there's is, one in the back too that has just him in the back. Yeah, and what I mean is, uh, in addition to Chadwick, they did that one for all the books that released on the one week and then the next week. But even in addition to him, I really should check that out, honestly, because it's anime, manga, and it's Marvel. So I really should check out Arrow. Uh, yeah, that. I uh, you, you might like Arrow. I've been reading Swordmaster and Arrow just because. Because I was like, same thing. I was like, oh, Marvel, manga, I might like it. Um, it it does play on those, like, you know, Japanese. But the thing is, it, it, it's because it does come from, uh, it was written overseas. It wasn't written here. And it was, I think it was digital first over there. And then they, Frank Cho actually translated it to English for the for the Marvel books. That's cool, though, man. Like, um, that's, that's really cool, actually. That's even better, honestly. I, I don't know. Maybe I just think that way, but. Yeah, no, you might uh, like it. Like I said, check it out. Yeah, Swordmaster and um, and uh, Arrow's been pretty good. I like Arrow so far. It's uh, interesting character, it, and uh, I just like new characters, man. Like, I, it might not seem like it because I don't always pick up new books and stuff, but I like good new characters. I just hate it when they introduce bad new characters. <laughs> yeah, there's uh there's there hasn't been any really new characters in the Marvel books that I know of. That have, uh, I mean, besides kind of her would be one of the only ones arrow. Uh, nothing, yeah. nothing to what was the one chick we had that got her own series? The Captain Marvel star, not starlight. Uh, oh, we're talking about star. Star, yeah, it was just Star. Star was one of the yeah, other new Star. editions. That one was pretty interesting. That they, that little mini series. Um, I'm I'm curious. I mean, when that's all gonna come back and play, you know? Cause... It, and that's my point is like you do get sometimes minor character introductions, but it's about recurring characters. That's how you know you've got a good character is they come back. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? The last good set of new characters really came with the like all new Marvel with like Riri Williams and Kamala Khan. And, and oh yeah, with that news too, huh? Right, that they picked their yes, uh, I, their yeah, they picked Kamala. I forgot about that. They did, yeah, that was news. How did we miss that? <laughs> right, seriously, it's like the only piece of Marvel news for months. That's probably it. about it. Yeah, I think um, it's because it guess, was so minor. Yeah, I guess if I can just go off my list really quick here. So, oh my gosh, bro, did you see that Super Seven's coming out with like a forty? Or was it like forty three inches tall? Um, no, forty three inches wide and thirty six inches tall. Uh, snake castle mountain for masters of the universe i did not it's, see that that's it, really it's, cool it's it's huge it makes, <laughs> it makes me wish that i still had my masters of the universe figures oh from... yo dude, i don't know if you know but they uh mattel rebooted the whole line for the original i can't afford to buy them all again man i had like yeah, all they, of them. they yeah they did he man they had uh battle cat they had uh Skeletor, they had Man of Many Faces, oh, uh, yeah. Glow Scarecrow, uh, they, they had everyone. They even had the little speedster, whatever he rides, Prince, whatever, Adam, I forget yep, his name. His but, uh, uh, yeah, so they, uh, it's the age of the retro this year, I don't see, it seems like, because they did that. They have the retro Ghostbuster Kenner line that came out from Hasbro. Hasbro's also doing the retro Spider Man stuff uh, from the 90s. They're also doing now the retro Power Ranger stuff. Remember the flip heads? Yeah. Yes, the I do remember the flip heads. Fuck. Uh, Hasbro's coming out with those again. Um, oh, and man. they're doing um, these Marvel kind of like uh, reaction or Kenner figures. Uh, their their idea is, um, you know, if Kenner had done the Marvel license, what, what would they look like? And so now they're doing like little retro Kenner action figures for uh, those guys too. Um, so yeah, it, it seems to be the age of the the retro. Um, oh, the other thing I guess can go. Uh, re, uh, re, at that time I was reincarnated. Slime is coming out this January. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The new season. I am actually sad about that though because they're caught up to the manga. Is that it? About it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're they were um, already. To be fair, it's going off of the novel, so it's not like they're caught up. But yeah. You're right. Um, 
There was also, did you watch the pandemic special from South Park? I didn't. I heard it was really funny, though. It's good, bro. It's good. They they play on everything, like uh, defunding the police. Uh, I the mean, COVID, South, South Park has but, always uh, been the best at topical humor. Everything. They, They're good. They, it's something that we really needed in this time, honestly, just to laugh. You know, I just keep waiting time. for more more of them to with Trump. But honestly, it's just too easy of a oh, joke. Oh, they did. Oh, Definitely yeah, did. of course <laughs> they do. <laughs> but that's that's my point. Is it's just such an easy joke for them. I don't even right. Like it's it's uh, it's not even going to be some. It probably will. They're pretty creative, so they'll come up with something I haven't heard before. But the other news, I guess we've missed. Jamie Fox does Sp- uh, going to supposedly back in the Spider Man, the MCU Spider Man. I, I didn't mention that because uh, I wasn't happy about it. <laughs> and he's saying that he's going to do Electro again. Can he please do a different version of Electro? Maybe I hope like, so. Maybe hope one that so. doesn't s- stutter and. Act, you know, act like I didn't like pussy. that they did him like that. They made him. I don't know. They made it him was a weird. big pussy. It made him a big it, fucking pussy. Yeah, because the Electro I know is kind of like he's seriously like just a hard ass criminal. He yeah, is he's a, literally like just a and, and even beyond a hard ass, he's he's like a lifetime criminal. That's all he. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's it. Electro's the guy who's like, you know, like give me your money in the bank. All right, let me get the fuck out of here. That's, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, he's yeah. not trying to take over the world except for in that one Electroverse Spider-Man story. <laughs> right. Uh, but so yeah, yeah, that was no. kind of news for me. I was like, okay, okay, we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, Barat two, come on, man! Did hear Amazon about that coming October twenty third? I as if there wasn't know, enough I'll, wrong I'll, with the world. You know, though, it was so funny is that nobody knew. He secretly shot this, and like literally a month later, said, "Oh, hey guys." I shot this about a year back, and uh, it's it's gonna come out this uh, this month. I was really surprised you know, about all that. So, well, I mean, it's really funny. I watched the first trailer, and uh, there's a few people you know already kind of knew who he was in the street a little bit. Oh, hey, it's Borat, it's Borat. But uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It it looks pretty funny. Uh, I just there, can't there was there, there was, was oh there, you know, there was one scene that made me laugh so bad right there in the in the trailer. There was a uh, there was a uh, Mike Pennant's uh he was doing like a conference and literally Barat got a fat suit on, put on the toupee and everything. He literally looked like Trump and walked in there with like a baby or so. I can't remember what he walked in with, but he was carrying something and he was just like, Hey, and he, you know, he's doing a stupid thing. I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe he did. <laughs> that so, sounds so fucking he, he, he's going, he's going to next, uh, next bub about that. And, uh, I guess the last thing I want to do is, uh, Tom McFarlane did a really cool, um, tribute uh cover that he's doing for his uh 311 spawn so it's uh chadwick wearing the spawn outfit and he's got the like the wakanda kind of doing this he's got his head down like that um so i thought that was really cool a little homage to him and then oh i guess another thing the craft trailer came out which i heard they were going to be doing but i heard some people were not happy with this trailer i didn't get to really check it out i haven't checked it out either i did hear about it but yeah i haven't heard uh whether it's even good or bad, the trailer. I haven't heard anything about it. I just yeah, knew it was so, out. So, so a few of the people that I've seen on my Facebook were kind of not, not happy. But I've never really been a fan of the craft, so... Maybe it'll be it might not. <laughs> yeah, it, it, may, <laughs> it may not displease me. Maybe I might actually like it. Uh, that was pretty much it, though. Yeah, just the craft. And then uh, I guess the last thing is um, Hasbro uh, reached the 8K mark of their uh, HasLab Razor uh, Crest vintage uh, vehicle that they're doing for um, the Mandalorian, you know, his uh, ship that he flies. Um, They're doing – Hasbro does these things called uh, HasLab projects, and they're kind of like uh, Kickstarters. And – they have to get a certain amount of people to back the project up so that then if they do, then they'll go ahead and put that into production for all those people that pre-ordered for it. It's just really for the people who would want something like that. Cause these things that they make are freaking massive. Like they did a transformers, uh, Unicron. And this thing is huge, man. Like I want to say it's like this big and like <laughs> maybe about like 30, 40 inches tall. Uh, it, it's huge. They, they did that. They did a huge, uh, star Wars brigade, uh, thing you know from the Return of the Jedi when they're um, they're fighting uh, fighting in the the desert with Jabba the Hutt and stuff that big giant flo- floating kind of like ship that they're flying on it looks like a ship with the sail and everything so they did that they did the 
giant sentinel for x-men which is like a 20 not 28 inch figure it's huge um they 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 do these really crazy projects and they mostly all get pretty much funded but the last one they did was for the mandalorian and uh it's for the vintage collection so it's like the the three inch figures okay um but uh every so often like the more backers they get so like after they reach their initial backup then there's a add-on backup for like if they get higher so like if they get from six thousand to eight thousand they'll add on another thing to the project they get from eight thousand to ten thousand then they add on something else um, so far, they've added on the um, the escape, co- escape, co- <laughs> escape pod from the top of the, uh, the ship, and then also like a little baby Yoda with his little um, his little ship thing that he's in, his little hover ship. That's funny. So uh, you should check it out. They'll check out the trailer. It is really, 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 really detailed that thing, and um, it's gonna. I think it's like three hundred dollars though, but uh, still. <laughs> Um, uh, people paid for it. They, they're, um, they're, you know, people Star Wars will buy, uh, people will buy just about anything. <laughs> so, but, uh, I mean, I look at it though. And I mean, yeah, I guess it's kind of worth that 300. Cause it literally from head to toe inside, everything is detailed. They, they had the, the ship opens up with the cargo, even in there, there's an armory in the armory. You can see all the guns there, all his guns is, uh, you can take it all out too. And so he can hold in all the grenades. I mean, it's not that they're so not worth cool stuff, it. It's but, just about how, yeah, yeah it's like wow that's that's a lot i, I could buy you know you could buy a game card yeah, that's a, a car payment right there or a car payment yeah see, so. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean if you guys want to support that project it's still open yep check it <laughs> out uh, i think it's gonna be open till i think uh, the beginning of november and then after that pre-orders will close out and uh, then you will no longer be able to get that product um once they are closed out um, and then Hasbro doesn't make it over again. That's like after that's it. It's a one-time deal kind of thing for them. That does um, make so. that does increase the value of it at least. But it's just once yes. again, it's one of those things where you just have to really look into your budget and be like, do I have room for this? <laughs> that's another thing people always say is like, I don't think I have room for. It. I want it, but I don't have room for this. <laughs> that's, I'm literally at that point where I actually want to get more shit for the room, but I'm so out of room. I gotta get a new spot. Uh, but with that said, I think, that, we, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, I think we've covered most everything. We've hit our usual hour time, which is good. Uh, thanks for coming on as always. And, uh, we'll, uh, oh no, Leo was in on the comic combos account. I oh. just noticed that on the, on the chat, but, uh, oh, yeah. he must've just barely joined. Cause I was on there for a while. I didn't no, see it him. was like 28 minutes ago, but it was oh, us. Wow. It was us that commented though. Cause he, he was on the page on accident. So he was on. Oh, Comic-Con, I see. I see. Against us. <laughs> That's our bad, man. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week as always. Hopefully there'll be more news. If not, there's always more comics to talk about and new toys <laughs> yeah. coming out every toys week. Now, comics it seem to be the only things that are at least consistent so far right now, but, uh, <laughs> mostly cause you uh, can play with them by yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. But yeah, thank all you guys. Right. And, uh, you all have a great night. Yeah. Have a good one. If you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get a exclusive access for as low as a dollar.